Hi everybody, it's Patty, the Tinkerer's Wife here. Um, welcome all of you who came today, and especially those of you who are here for the first time. I really appreciate you checking out the channel, and I hope that you find today's project inspiring, everybody. Um, and I'm sure that some of you are wondering why I would be using toilet paper right now to do art. Well, let me just say, we need to lighten up about toilet paper. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Man, I tell you what, I'm so tired of the drama over toilet paper. So I was thinking, I was thinking about this one day and just, uh, I just started laughing when I realized that something I absolutely love to do uses toilet paper as one of the things I use. I mean, really, toilet paper. This is Angel Soft Toilet Paper, and I want to let you guys know right now, this is the best I've ever found to use for this particular kind of project. So just stop where you are, and I mean, you can try your toilet paper at home, but I guarantee you this is going to turn out better. It is, it doesn't have all the other additives to make it strong and soft. You don't need those things. You just need a good toilet paper. And some of us use Scott tissue in our bathrooms. Um, I have been known to do that. Matter of fact, I got some in there right now. But it is too fibrous. Um, this has the perfect fiber, it's the perfect weight, and it's two ply, which you need. So without further ado, let's get to cracking here. We are going to use the butterfly, which I showed an embossed image of earlier. Uh, in the introduction, we are going to be using a an old sheet. This is a very old sheet. This is like next to rotten material, but it's wonderful uh, for soaking up water, which we're going to need to do. And a stomping brush like this. This is actually a paint brush. It is not a stenciling brush. This is softer than a stenciling brush. Uh, it's kind of between a stenciling brush and a makeup brush. Yeah. And a spray bottle for some water. So, without further ado, let's get cracking here. So I've got this image, which is rather large, and I'm going to try and drop you down so you can see better what's going on. So... Excuse me while I do that. <laughs> A peek -a boo right? Okay. I want to be able to see. Sorry about that. This is just... I need a cameraman. I need, I need a setup up here in the kitchen, which is where I do all my artwork, so I can have a good place to teach you guys. That doesn't look too bad, does it? Okay, I'm going to move that out of the way. That I can't move out of the way because that is one I just got done doing. Um, I'm going to show you this other background stamp real quick. This is what, this is a background stamp, this one right here, that I just got done doing. It does not have a stamp on it so I can't press it down. It'll just melt away into nothing. Um, these two here, this horse, which is that that's an Angel Company stamp, and this is one of my favorites, but I'm not going to take this off here because it will stretch if I do, and that is this one here, and I've got a piece of art that I've done with that, and I will, I will show that off later, um, probably in Instagram pictures or something like that. I think I actually posted it on Instagram once already, but hey, good art is worth sharing. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to take and just wet this really well. And I am going to peel apart. I don't normally on these peel these apart unless they are too big for for the um, stamp. The stamp is too big for the paper. I generally don't. And you want to go through and make several layers. Uh, right now I'm just going to do two layers. I don't want to do too, too many layers. And one thing that's really good to do when it's like this, I'm going to go ahead and add two 
and peel off one as I do that. That works sometimes really well too. That way I don't end up with areas that are super thick and areas that are not quite as thick. And you don't end up with the lines when it's all done. You can't see the lines of the toilet paper. Yay. Okay. Now I'm going to I'm going to pounce on this and I'm going to kind of roll it out so that the air that's caught underneath, you can see where that gets darker and the air is released. And you kind of do that and it pushes it too. I'm using this stamp because it can use a lot of the techniques I use on those other stamps for it. This one's one that uh, really works well for that. And if it's like this, this is a little dry, boom, that works out pretty slick. Okay, some of these interior spots might need a little more water. Uh, it may actually tear but so minusculely, you know, puncture holes in it, so minusculely it's not going to matter. Now if I tried to do it with my fingers, I might rip it, you know, like serious rip, like, oh darn, I can't fix that one. So this kind of a paintbrush is really worth getting. Now I did find this at the thrift store. I don't know what they are online. I'll try to find it. And um, I will post information on the community page regarding... Uh, some of the products like this brush things like that um, and you'll be able to check there we'll post them with a picture uh, so you have an idea of what I'm talking about I will post a couple of things on my community page actually the other thing I will post is one that will have um, a list of what we're going to use next time so um, what I make today here, that will be on the list. And then other things I will need to add to that list, um, which will be the encaustic medium. And I actually make my own caustic me encaustic medium because it's much cheaper to do that um, than to buy the ready-made. Um, and the beeswax, which those of you who keep bees or know somebody who does keep bees, or you can go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and get, get beeswax. Uh, candle supply stores have it. A lot of beekeepers sell beeswax and are selling it online now. I think that's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more layers. So you kind of get the idea about this. Now when I get done with these two layers, there will be something else that will um, that I'll be needing to do that I'll show you. Well, that isn't coming apart. Of course, we're wasting people's time. I guess I'll put it down and then try lifting it up. How about that? Which way? Okay, I want to put these on. Now I'm alternating these too because that helps to hide the seams as well. My hands are shaking. I just love when they do that. When you get older, kids, things don't work like they used to. So you just learn to work around them. You learn how. You can still do the same thing. It just takes a little longer. And you just have to be a little more careful. I think that's probably good. I lived the first part of my life like at breakneck speed. Of my adult life, I was superwoman. People were, my best friend was just, she couldn't believe I did everything I did. I think I've probably said that before in a video, but it's really true. I, um, I was crazy. I was like next to insane. Um, going to school, working at a nursery in the springtime. Um, I was going to school full time in the fall and winter. Um, and spring and summer were just completely all about plants and gardens and volunteering and and I didn't take any classes in the summertime but I did take I think one or two classes in the spring but because I worked so bloody hard in the spring I couldn't take any more than like one or two classes because there just wasn't enough time in the day but I'd come home and I'd keep house and I'd grow plants in my garden and in my yard and I would sell plants here. 
So I had a lot on my plate, and I mean a lot. And uh, that lot was too much, and I ended up getting sick. So just a word to the wise. Those of you who are doing a lot, take care. I've learned the importance of being still through a back injury and fibro and bad knees and having to give up my horticulture career, at least for a season. I don't know if God will ever allow it to come back, and I am okay with that. Whatever he brings, whatever he has me do will be a blessing. I will receive blessings from it, and I am so crazy creative, you know, I'm doing things all the time, so anything I do, I'll put that creativity in so it's not lost to me. Um, okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm pressing this down in, I'm using my fingers to press this down into the crevices a little bit more so you see a little bit more of that image. And if I see any place that the, it also helps to make this not so wet. Okay, that's an area right there that wants to lift a lot. You can see how much clearer it gets though. I really need to learn to edit because I could do like an hour long tutorial that y'all could follow along with and we could have a lot more fun. I know, you guys keep yelling at me to learn to, I'm so bad. I'm so flippin' stubborn about that. And I've just got a lot on my plate right now. Um, the estate's gonna be closing here pretty soon. Um, those of you who don't know, my husband passed away in August and I am going to be moving, so I have to go through everything and sell every, you know, sell stuff that I won't be taking with me. Um, there are collections of things. Um, it is, it is, an incredibly rather insane amount of things to have to deal with um, so anyway now I got that done I'm just gonna leave it like that but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull from the edges and try to pull this out and soften this edge a little so that it isn't square and it's not pulling this will give it uh, a real unique appearance and when when I go to use the beeswax uh, the encaustic resin which I'm going to use which I'll explain a little bit more about that here in a second um, I can use the encaustic the hot resin or the hot encaustic medium to remold this a little bit so that it will be better I can I can kind of fix it later but anyway, um, that's what I wanted to show you today. I want to show you again the other finished, the one I did the first time around. This is the side that I will use. This is what I call the positive side here. Um, this you could use just for a background texture, but this I can actually use for something. So I didn't, you can see the difference. I didn't make the soft edges here, but here it's going to look, I think that's going to look really lovely. So anyway, this up here. Ah, now I can talk to you. Wow, that took a lot less time. <laughs> I made this, I, I tried making this one time before and I made those other two and my camera shut off at 25 minutes. I mean, how rude is that, really? I need a camera that'll take a lot longer video, I think, or I need, just need to learn how to edit. That would be the other thing. Um, so anyhow, um, yeah, so I really love doing this. I hope you guys find it interesting. Um, if you make things like this, send me them. Email me pictures of them. Um, I would love to see it. Or go to my Facebook page and post a picture of it there. It's, it's Patty with a Y, um, underline, and Hicks, H-I-C-K-S. Um, and you can, you can post them there on my uh, Facebook page and show me what you made. I would love to see those. Um, so, and oh, that's going to stay there for a while. <laughs> the other thing is with the stamp. 
is this is sticky so it'll stick to like a acrylic pad so it's a, a royal pain to get up off of there but you can see look at that isn't that cool and that's going to be beautiful and this is going to be a giveaway when I'm done I will do a giveaway with this one um, and the lucky winner will have a piece of art that they can put up on their wall um, I will try to make it a unisex kind of thing so that men will like it too and not just have it be too frilly um, I'm not a real girly girl um, I do like a lot of color so it will be colorful almost guaranteed that and uh, it will have an inspiration on it um, that I will that I will put on it I'm ruining the edges here so excuse me while I get a little squirrely and distracted so anyhow I'm just gonna lay that down there um, I was trying to think if there was anything else that I was going to talk about, but I think that might be about all for today. Um, the next time I will be seeing you, we will be working with hot wax. And I will be um, using a pancake griddle with a uh, thermometer on it, and I will have those explained in the content on the community section. Um, and I will point you to links to um, some good encaustic artists that have a lot of safety tips. Um, some of you have used, have melted wax, that you've used it for different things, for um, salves and stuff like that. So you already kind of know the shtick on that. But um, and encaustic resin is different than plain beeswax. It, its base is beeswax, but it also has Damar resin in it which helps to raise the smoke point and the melting point of the beeswax. So it makes it harder when it cures um, and it's, it's not edible so you can't, whatever you heat it in, uh, like I'm going to use a pancake griddle with little cans on it, that can't be used for food because the Damar resin is not edible, just so you know. So I'm just going to put that out there. Uh, but I think it's going to be a really fun process, and it's fun teaching you guys. I really thank you for coming along today and being here with me so that we can make some fun stuff using toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, I just love these. I think they're so beautiful. Yes. So anyway, I really hope you guys have a good day, that this is something that you will enjoy doing. And by the way, this is good if you have... Um, kids that like to spend time with quiet kind of creative things uh, they can be younger kids they don't have to be 13 or 17 years old they can be as young as six or seven and still like to do this kind of thing and if theirs doesn't come out perfect that's okay you know sometimes the best one of the, some of the best ideas come from mistakes that are made by the artist so that's a good way to do problem solving. Uh, there's just a whole number of things you can do with it. You look at it and you go, what else could I use it for? Or how else could I use it? And that's a really fun thing to do. And it's one of the things I love about the creative process. So thank you all for joining me. Uh, please remember on your way out to like the video and be sure to, um, if you aren't subscribed, I, re I would encourage you also to subscribe and click that notification bell so that you don't miss the up and coming videos in this series. So with that, I'm going to bid you a fond adieu. This is Patty the Tinker's wife saying goodbye. I'll see you next time <laughs> and God bless.